I'll put the slide up on my phone. Oh, Andrea, I believe <laughs> uh, we we were going to get the uh, the sort of pitch and the roll and that sort of thing all controlled by the accelerometer on the phone. But of a website for this kind of event, like hackathon event. So I think lots of people have great ideas, and potentially everyone can sort of work more in groups. They came up with the idea of putting a website <laughs> with ideas down um, the left hand side. So see something like build a spaceship. You can see a description. Somebody before the event or during the event comes up with the idea, puts the uh, information in there, what skills they need, if there's any programmer, um, the resources that are required, and uh, also you can see who's actually working on that uh, idea. Now, in the middle column, we have attendees, so that's where um, people like yourselves can just add um, you know, details about yourself. You can link to your social network sites um, and also uh, sort of a bit about what you do and your skills, and that way. If someone has an idea, then they can go through and see, oh, that person, you know, is suitable and therefore, you know, could join in um, that, that group. And then obviously you've got the Twitter feed down on the right-hand side as well. So really this is just an initial prototype. I mean, you can actually create a new idea. Um, so if you put something like build a mobile game, and then, you know, add it to the list. It's all very much an initial prototype. Um, and in the future, we could even connect up like the music system, so at the bottom you could have you know, choose what someone's next. So all this code is available uh, on GitHub, um, and I'll see, see to Zach and see if we can actually incorporate this in a future hackathon or even for this one, so we can see what everyone's been doing. So, um, yeah, I'm a graphic designer rather than coder, so I decided to create a logo for the Open Device Lab that will be opening um, in the innovation space soon. Um, so, yeah, I've just been playing around with this, like, today. Um, the icon itself is just, like, yeah, a little chemistry lab thing with a phone and a little USB next to it. And then, yeah, I was going to see what you guys thought about colour-wise. And uh, we can decide what colour is going to be the main colour that we use together. Uh, takes the colour and the state and then just directly switches the, the pin on and off. Uh, so, I have got it doing sounds as well. Um, I, I did Google the calls for Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, well, decide for yourself. It's kind of along the right line. It's, it's yeah. along sort of the right line, and that's just some default song that was on there. So if, if you can actually, you might be able to see, in, in the code, you can actually hear, you just, uh, for the Pietro, or he's how you pronounce it, you can actually just specify an array of uh, like the chords in the song, mm. and it, then it would just go through those and play them. <laughs> Nick would demonstrate. We also Nick came up with a great idea of using uh, web sockets uh, to be able to control the sound on here. So it uses the uh, device's accelerometer to <laughs> like di communicate yeah. directly with the API and send through like a sort of sound uh, interpretation of of uh, mixed device. <laughs> okay guys, uh, what we started off with was, you see, um, you see the little blue dot there, in just by leaves? Oh yeah. Um, about the centre of the UK. Um, we started off by getting populations for every country in the world from an API. And we're going to sort of do a heat map. Um, based on the population. It turns out it doesn't actually work very well. It, it, you can't make it really big. Um, so yeah, that was our plan. And then we're going to do a slider based on the year, so you can slide progressively see, you know, based on where it is. Um, so obviously, as you expect, can we zoom out? And then you might be able to see a little bit better what we've got. What we've done is we've weighted it based on the maximum population country-wise. And it gives you like a percentage. So you can see China and India, quite a few more uh, sort of points. So what we've started off with is putting one point on the heat map for every person in the country, which is uh, like 7 billion people. And that ended up crashing the browser. <laughs> down, what, like, uh, yeah, I think we divided by a hundred thousand in the end. 
And as you can see, you can sort of see that it's it's started to you know, sort of representation of how many people are in the country. But it's not really spread out, so that's where we sort of run out at the end of the day. Um, and the year doesn't work. Uh, never, none of us have jumped an ivory now, so we didn't know what we were doing. So we just thought we just made a, a traffic light sort of system with LEDs and uh, also uh, massively. Which one was that? In, uh, we made a little Christmas singing uh, ivory now. Jingle bells. Jingle bells, uh, so, yeah. So <laughs> we have got to show, really. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Cool. <laughs> Make a game uh, with pebbles and uh, pebble watches and um, no jets. Uh, kind of works pretty badly actually. And actually, it's one of the only games that I've played recently where it gets easier progressively as you go through levels. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so the kind of idea was that at the beginning we were going to try and do like a um, a game of Pong, where like each pebble basically has a up and down button and a centre button on the side of the watch, and uh, we're going to kind of control the paddle and stuff. Uh, and then we ran out of time, so we made a uh, very boring two-ball game. Did you want to next to you? Yeah. It's very, very puggy. Uh, right. Two sets. Okay, we're in. So the idea oh, is to get the purple time. ball. Onto the purple ball. Oh, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. I've gone down. So one, <laughs> one, down, down, one right. yeah, one pebble watch controls up and down, one pebble watch controls left and right. Very badly. It uses web switches, <laughs> they're gonna lose. Um, <laughs> and it's actually they go down. We found go down, go down. It, we found it to be really <laughs> score zero. Um, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> it's either the fact that it's um, the uni network or the fact that we're like pumping so much data through the web sockets that it's just not really Handling very well, um, but yeah, that's what we got. So um, yeah, in, um, it takes the pixel values of are you know, white, great. Well, we're going to paint your colour, and if not, we're going to paint you black and forget about you. And so when you draw over it with light, it leaves a trace, and then has an age to that pixel colour, and then goes right. You're over five seconds old. Let's get rid of you. So the trend appears when it behaves itself, which is not doing some reason. So um, you know how they say it'll be all right with the mic. And it's just those simple. It's 49. It's fine. And that's how you get that effect. It's yeah, cool. There's yeah, no it's sneaky OpenCV magic. No, you don't see it. It's using OpenCV to grab the camera feed and to move the pixels. But there's no. Yeah. Basically, uh, it's got wheels, so it can move around. <coughs> so, uh, and as it goes up and down, and some pieces can close and open. Uh, we use this thing called the Delta T. I don't know if any of you have. Well, it's quite cool because um, you can use a uh, .NET to program this micro and then you got things like webcams, uh, touch screens, uh, all sorts of sensors, and it's really, really easy to uh, use as well. So we got it running around and with the arm going up and down, uh, and then I see my mic, so it crashed, uh, and we just don't go. <laughs> <laughs> so then that is just great. Um, and we didn't really have time to, you know, build the code. Uh, Okay, so kind of, uh, was it, was it that? Yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool.